Hello and welcome to Desperate Art Wives podcast. I'm Susan Merrick and today I have the pleasure of speaking to Shira Richter. Shira Richter is an international feminist artist activist living in Israel. She's known for activating motherhood in her art and her art is a practice which is multidisciplinary including films, photography um, and what she terms visual performance lectures. Uh, Shira has been working for over two decades, has a plethora of work, and I'm really excited to talk to her today. Welcome, Shira. Hi, Susan, and thank you. (laughs) No problem. Um, So I wanted to ask you first, before we get into some of the recent work you've been doing, Shira, um, what what was it that instigated um, your own art practice? I graduated from the film department. After also studying uh, graphic design, and I went on to make um, a few films before I become became a mother. But the questions regarding uh, mothers started even before I became a mother and started actually trickling into my work. For instance, uh, my film that uh, is connected to my recent work, even though it's I made it several years ago. It's called Two States of Mind, and it's based on a question that entered my mind that has a lot to do with the mother body and the fact that we as women are the ones who bear the children in our bodies. And then most of the educational systems, you know, women actually are the carers and the teachers and the principals and the educators. They're predominantly women. And I was asking a political question, a gender and political question regarding my voice as a woman in the reality of the conflict, the political conflict in which I have grown up and I live, meaning the the Israel-Palestine conflict. The question started with where are women's voices regarding the conflict? Why don't I see them or hear them? Uh, Is it because they don't have a voice? Is it because they don't have an opinion? Is it because they have an opinion and they don't say it? Is it because um, they have an opinion and they say it and maybe they use different words or a different way of speaking or are they silenced? So all these questions started bubbling up in me many, many years ago even before I became a mother. And making that film, which is called, uh, again, Two States of Mind, it's a story, it's a road movie, it's a documentary road movie about uh, two women, an Israeli and Palestinian, who are invited to uh, participate in a cutthroat Jeep rally competition in the desert of the uh, the Moroccan desert. and. Uh, the press co- coined it uh, Telma and Louise of the Middle East, and a lot of people thought it was uh, a real film because uh, at the end of screenings, they'd say, so Shira, how did you put together such a crazy rally? And uh, <laughs> yeah, so actually, you see, my artistic way of working was already in gear, and it showed itself in the way I made the film that even though it was a documentary, it almost feels like a kind of feature adventure. Yeah, and it obviously you from from as as you say from well before you became a mother. Um, there's your interest here in in women's voices and um, whether those voices are being silenced and if so how, um, and that's um, such a relevant um, question to then come forward into the work that you've been doing as a mother. Yes, it, it 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 took me a while to realize how connected uh, my first projects or you know initial projects are to what I'm doing now, and how actually I don't like uh, jump around really. I even though it seems like I'm very multidisciplinary, the themes that that um, occupy me actually stay quite uh, in the similar area of gender, politics, economics, value, worth. Uh, unpaid work and uh and you see uh, uh, 
a woman in Israel is expected to bear children who are expected to join, well, not expected, they have to join the army and do army service. So, you know, and who's the one create, creating these, um, you know, these people that uh, become a Jewish nation or an Israeli nation or uh, become fighters. So, and I was thinking we women are the ones who do most of the years of investing in this human life. And suddenly at the age of 18, this life is plucked away from us by a very patriarchal organization called uh, the army. And, uh, you know, it's like it's like if if you had an investment in a bank, like and you 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 know you looked after it for eighteen years, and then would you give this investment over to somebody else just like that? You know, it's it's almost crazy. So, so that's where I started thinking about the voices of mothers, not as an essentialistic um, question, but more as. Uh, almost like logistic question because, you know, just the time invested and the efforts and the price, the price of, you know, bringing up this life, which, which uh, desperate art waves, art wives deals with a lot. This price, I was thinking, well, maybe those who decide on war so fast, it's because they have no idea what the real price of creating a life uh, uh, the real prices of creating a life are they don't they have no idea, and that's why you know it's like they just don't do it. So it's really cheap for them to go to war, you know, because when you don't know the price of something, then it's considered cheap. So here, the price of creating, sustaining, and nurturing, and uh, a life are not known by the people who decide on violence and war. Absolutely. And it's interesting that you um, you seem like at some points you you've thought that your work was perhaps um, not one thing. But I already from speaking to you and from from what I've looked of your work over the 20 years, Shira, I, it's, it's just these huge, clear themes to me and this a large contextual backdrop to to your work, which just solidifies it as as one large body. Um, which you you're describing really beautifully there in in terms of where your impetus has come from um with your work and and also your aims that your aims are ab- about looking at logistics about looking at um the the social side of these things and about looking at the um economics of it because because those are the those are the languages that people speak actually which um which makes then your your work um democratized and and very relevant to those who maybe wouldn't think of art being relevant in the in these areas. That's a very good point, and one uh, I'm sure you're busy with, and I am regarding how, you know, how to bring a serious a serious reaction or a treatment of the art, uh, and as equal an equal voice on the tables. And in fact, this is what I was really trying. To communicate now in Berlin. Okay. Could you tell us a bit more about what you're doing in Berlin, please, Shira? I'd love to. <laughs> okay. It connects very, it connects to the, my work on the film. Okay. What I didn't say yet is at the same, at a very similar time to when I uh, got my film out into the, you know, TV and festival circuit and traveling in several countries then actually part of the research of my film i discovered a un a new un resolution and the number is 1325 and this resolution called for including women in the negotiation teams in areas of conflict because as we know women are not really at the political table why well one because uh, women are 51% of the, you know, of society. So uh, we, duh, we belong there. And um, yeah. also because, because war affects women as well, and it affects them usually differently. 
and they have and and also they have a different perspective um the mother issue is not really in there because i guess people are still afraid of being essentialistic but i obviously drag that into into the table you know so every opportunity i have it can't be avoided you can't avoid the question of motherhood when you're talking about women <laughs> Yeah, the, the the thing is, the reason that I'm a little bit careful on this subject is is because there is a misunderstanding, you know, of this subject of of you know all women and mothers in war. Oh, of course, all all mothers don't want war, and that's not my angle. That again, that's yeah. very it's very essentialistic, and it's very easy to fall into that trap. And actually, feminists are terrified. Okay, I'm I'm doing a gross, um, uh, what's the word? Gross generalization, saying that uh, this, but I have met a lot of this kind of reaction from feminists and academic feminists who thought that my work was actually, you know, shoving us back into the home and into just mothering and and nothing else, because oh, mothering is so great and so important, so so. I always kind of find myself in a trap between both uh, people who don't understand feminism at all or feminists and academic feminists who don't understand my angle of bringing my and our angle of bringing the subject of motherhood. And yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. And, and again, do not understand the, um, the amazing influence art can have on, on, communication of this subject in my view absolutely yeah so in berlin i was um it was a conference and workshop both conference and workshop of israelis palestinians and germans women all women all women who are uh interested in implementing resolution 1325 uh with politicians This conference took place in the foreign, the German foreign ministry of, uh, in Berlin. We were trying to influence the, the minds and knowledge of policymakers. This is very important because, you know, being, a, and actually this is a dream. This whole project and conference is kind of like uh, what you are doing and what others in the mother studies are doing. It's kind of a dream of one person uh, and a woman. Okay, the point I m made and I got a hug from a woman who's one of the initiators of the Green Party in Germany for saying this, <laughs> which is a big honor. I said, we need the arts as a language in that is incorporated in these talks in these communications because and not as a side dish not as an embellishment you know because usually what conference says oh they bring in this um yeah an entertainer or they bring and or they bring in some even si a singer but the arts are usually viewed again as an embellishment as a side dish as um, something nice and cute and not serious. Yeah, you're absolutely right. So are you me, looking, yeah. did you talk about ways of um, combating that uh, within that environment? Yeah, well, first of all, I try to uh, embody the spirit of what I think art and artistic view is meaning i try to really i try to talk in that language i and i talk with pictures i really talk with pictures and that's what i tried to do in berlin was to try to communicate my ideas with the aid of my art some other people's art or even a comic strip that i drew about um the subject of um, us women and the patriarchy. So I really believe that it's, it's you know, bringing in images and bringing in feelings in this way and bringing in uh, humor, 
also humor, which I'm not <laughs> very humorous right now because of the time of the night, but I think it it's really, it, it melts people and it can help in looking at things in a very different way and also to diffuse tension a lot of times. Well, obviously art can also create tension, but you know, it depends how we use it. Uh, that's it's that's incredibly powerful and um, also immediately international in looking at visual ways of representing um, these ideas ra rather than perhaps spoken or written language. Yes, and um, it's it's uh, spo you you I I completely agree with you that um, there's a big difference between the spoken the spoken word the heard word the seen word the image and each uh each communicates so differently it's it, it's beautiful actually you know it really is and i think it's what becomes um exciting for us as artists yeah it's a challenge it's a challenge definitely um the other point I try to make in in this uh, get together in Berlin, which was actually really am amazing with fascinating uh, women, and you know when you put Israeli women and and Palestinian women together who are who are interested in in seizing you know the violent at atmosphere, it you know it's so I think we really want to learn from each other and we want to listen to each other and we have this thirst to try and get to solve things and we never have enough time or enough funding or enough support and then we're, we have to leave and in, in midst you know project and then go back to our borders and our governments and and so on one hand it's really very exciting and the other hand it's it you know it's I know it's like this but it's always such a Ah, you know, and then you come back to the country and then the war, there's a war going on now in the South. They just had a ceasefire today, but it's, you know, it's ongoing. So what, what are the second point, and this is what I want to get to, the second point I tried to make, which is actually maybe the first point, was about the connection between Mother's Day, International Mother's Day in the United States and pacifism and anti-war activism of mothers as mothers. And you know this already, but um, a lot of people don't realize, re realize the connection between Resolution 1325 and the real, um, the real intent behind National Mother's Day in the United States. I don't know the link. I would uh, love you to be open my mind to that, please. Oh, okay. So, first of all, I want to mention um, Sarah Black from Liverpool and uh, her partner okay. es Esther Esther G. Ryan invited me in March of 2018 to be part of their Mother's Day project which was based on the source of Mother's Day in the United States. Now I'll get into it. <clears throat> there are two women who are known to be connected to the creation of this day, both of them for the reason of pacifism. The first one, Julia Ward Howe, was a very interesting woman and mother and she wrote she was a writer as well and she wrote the battle hymn republic okay she was an abolitionist meaning she was against slavery so she wrote this poem which become became the most famous patriotic american song which uh, the troops love singing and in fact whitney uh, houston has an amazing rendering of it and it's, it's you know it's very uplifting and you know, it, very easy to be, you know, caught up in this beautiful old song. And then, and then, okay. and then the Civil War in this, in America broke out and 10 years, and she realized, um, uh, she had no, no interest in war whatsoever. And she was very active in many, um, women's groups on both sides of the, you know, the rift trying to, you know, t care for the wounded, care for the people, care. So 
Anyhow, so 10 years, about a decade later, she wrote, she went 180 degrees U-turn and she wrote Mother's Day Proclamation. Mother's Day Proclamation did not become as famous as the patriotic uh, hymn. And it was erased on, you know, buried under the dust of history of his story, as we know, because, you know, no one thought it was important. And it's, it's a beautiful proclamation that, that calls for all women to unite, all mothers to unite uh, around the world in order to prevent war and bloodshed, which are a waste. And she mentions the fact, she mentions the exact thoughts that I had when I made my project, uh, the mother, daughter and Holy Spirit, which I, I don't think we'll get to, but, um, she says, we mothers know the real cost of life. And that's one thing she mentions and she mentions the price. And that's exactly my line of thought. And when I discovered her at the beginning, I was like, Oh my goodness, this woman blows my mind. You know, she's amazing. And I didn't know about her. And the second thing she says, well, she says several things. She talks about an international women's conference. Basically, she 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 also tries to be very inclusive, of course, not of African-Americans. But, you know, you know, that was long before. And and she also says that um, this uniting together is in the purpose that we again, we mothers who know the price of life will not let. Our ch- child kill the child of another another woman, which is so wow. yeah exactly. And that my that has been my focus since I started asking the questions, which led to the film until today. My focus is very very you know to the core of that question of that idea of that of of the price of life, the price of sustaining life. And those who decide on war have no idea what this price is. That's why one of my central subjects in the last two, three years has been talking and researching and joking and and, and finding ideas regarding solidarity between women, which is not as simple as it sounds. And you probably know that. <laughs> Yeah, and that brings you right back, and also your running theme of value as well, which I've seen in um, much of your um, imagery. Um, and that, yeah, that's such a fascinating um, body of work and a really exciting place to be at. That you're in those political spaces um, with real opportunity for massive political and social change that's just absolutely huge Shira um thank you so much for talking to us um I hope that we get a chance to talk again um on another podcast because I think there's so much more to hear um but thanks very much thank you everybody for listening um that was the Desperate Art Wives podcast for this month and uh, we'll speak to you soon bye